another episode of The Wrap. Yeah. And I was just telling Re Levi before we came on that he was the one that preached us <laughs> last Sunday. So uh, I told him I would intro this thing and then I was going to throw it over his way uh, and let him kind of start uh, start things off for today. So yeah. without further ado. Yeah. Episode number 28. Dang, 20. Yeah, eight. I know. We're, we're... I'm feeling so old. Well, <laughs> I know. We're 20... 28 Weeks episodes old. old, young, yeah. whatever way you want to look at yeah. it, we're making progress. So, so today we're yeah, talking. Today we we're, we ended our disciple series. Yes, yeah. To, that was the the cap on the, the cap on the disciple the, series. The cherry on the ice cream. If you well, will. if you want to call it a cherry, it it was good. It was good. <laughs> and so you were talking about yes. the concept of choices. Um, and so, like yeah. I said, just kind of yeah. take it away a little bit and lead us. So. And so this week we were talking about how, you know, discipleship is a choice that we have to make. And uh, it's, a it's a choice we need to make daily, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, when we are faced with situations, that choice is there. You know, it's, I, I likened it back to, you know, in Deuteronomy, where Moses is like, choose you this day, you know, life or death. Yeah. And in case you're not, you know tracking with me here choose life yeah you know that's, that's, that's what that's what you, <laughs> you know, that's a choice you loved, should make i would have loved to have that kind of uh uh help on a test in school and it be like true or false by the way it's true yeah it's yeah, true right. you really want to go with Pre true on like half thing. of it pre-filled yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly but, but yeah discipleship is a choice and it's it's one that we have to make like i said daily and so what we did was we looked at Two different stories. And so the first story is the uh, story of the lady who came and anointed Jesus' head. Um, feet. Feet. Oh, that's it. Yeah. No, well, this one was the head. Okay. The yeah. Head. Yeah. So. Sorry, that was another one. Of that is another one. Yeah. He was anointed a couple different times, but this one was okay, just the head. Got it. Um, but she brought in this really expensive. It, it sounds like a really weird substance. It was not Nard. Yeah. Whatever that may be, right? I've Perfume. never, never Perfume. smelled nard, but yeah. Coco Chanel. Coco Chanel. No, probably not. But it was super expensive, right? Yeah, super. Like so. Did you do? By the way, did you in your studying come up with? I, this is just interest me. Probably doesn't anybody else. Did you come up with like an equivalent of what that would probably cost her to do that? Oh gosh. Well, I mean, in the text itself, it was a year's worth of wages then. Okay. So. I mean, I'm not sure what a year. So we're talking. Mean, we're ta yeah, we're it, talking major costs. Yeah, like somebody major, had worked all year. Costs. Like, imagine that that you would work all year and whatever you bring in for pay for a year, yeah. you took and you just lavished you just, that and spent that on one thing. And here's the thing that that I think is so amazing about her gift to Jesus, and I, I believe that was a gift. Of, that was an act of worship towards Jesus. Um, she didn't just dribble that stuff on his head. Yeah, she wasn't like taking a little medicine drop. Right, or, like, right. And, and I did I did do some research on, you know, what kind of bottle that would have been. Yeah. And it would have had a very small opening. Yeah. So that it would obviously not just rush out of there. Yeah. She broke that off. She just smashed it and just, you know. Dumps it dumps all over it the place. All over Jesus. Interesting. I like so that. I, I, I thought, you know, isn't that how we should be giving... Our lives to Jesus and, and of ourselves, of ourselves, right? Not begrudgingly, not not small drops, small drops of break us. that sucker off, break it open, dump it. Yeah, just dump it, you know, at the feet of Jesus. I like that, you know, and I I, I feel like that was her choice to make, and, and she made that regardless of. I mean, the the, the section we were reading in, in Mark talk about some of the disciples scolding her, like she was. That yeah, was not like a popular that. thing like to we do. Could right, have, right. We could have used right. that money for now, some, other gospel else. accounts. Kind of bring in it was it was Judas kind of fueling that because he, he, he wanted to like we could have taken that money. We could have used it to feed the poor. Right, do, do really right. think? No, but we really yeah, know he just he wanted to line his pockets, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, he was yeah. one line his pockets. We know that about Judas. So, and I look at that and I think, how many times do we hold back from following after Christ? You know, either for the express purpose of it's not a popular thing to do, mm -hmm. or just simply because, well, we want to kind of retain a little control, right? That, or it'll cost us too much. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Cost too much time. Yeah. 
too many resources, Time, effort, resources, reputation, yeah. all those things. Yeah. yeah. So we yeah. just kind of hold back. We a hold back bit. on it, you know. Yeah, but this lady, this lady, make she and takes off, and she just. All and I think it's very important, and we're because you're, you're going to seg here in a minute into mm. another story that yeah. has the same kind of idea. But she made a willing, voluntary choice to do this. Nobody yes. forced her. Yeah. Nobody said, you know what? It'd be a really good idea. Like yeah. you'd really get in with good with Jesus yeah. if you went. No. Yeah. And she, that's what not what she was thinking either. You know, she wasn't trying to to. You know, I know some people who will do stuff to try to, I don't know, coerce God into doing something for them. Yeah. This was a, I'm going to do this for you, Jesus. Or out of an what. act of worship, of, right. out of a heart's devotion, out of a heart that was overflowing in love for Jesus, right. she, she gives lavishly, yeah. Yeah. expensively, at great cost to yeah. her. Yeah. Uh, and it is, it's just so impressive uh, to, to see that story and to think of that, of just, that was her own... Mm voluntary choice to do this. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, like I said, just very, very impressive. And so that's the one story that you talked about. Um, yeah. And but, then on the other side, because uh, so Mark really kind of bookends um, this, this whole crucifixion scene, mm -hmm. which, you know, we talked about how the Gospels are centered on this one moment in time. I think this is, this is the, the center of the Gospel. This is why Jesus came. Yeah. You know? And we, Which, by the way, Mark likes to do that a lot. He yes. likes to book in sections yes, with, with similar things. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. Uh, which might be why I ended up with like like chapters nine through well ten through sixteen. Yeah, because it is a nice starts little starts with one thing, yeah. and ends yeah. with the kind of the very similar thing. So yeah. yeah, go ahead and tell us um, about what happened. So Joseph of Arimathea, I, you know, I I've read that. I don't. I mean, I grew up in church. I've known about Joseph of Arimathea for. Yeah, but really, on the grand as long as I've been on the alive, grand right? scheme of things, he's a very right. Unknown, you don't you don't hear much about him. Yeah, except for a few things in the, 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 towards the end of the Gospels. Yeah, but plays but plays a very important part in the Gospels. He and does. tells us something. Well, and I didn't important. realize this either. If you look at, I mean, if you look at what he did, mm -hmm. you know, you may, we may think of, oh, that was that was cool of him to do. Yeah. Right. So what do you mean? What What did he do specifically? Just he to, offered up his tomb. Yeah. That he had. For Jesus' burial, yeah, and prepare Jesus' body for burial. So don't we get the impression that Joseph of Arimathea is probably someone who is well off? Yes. Okay. Yes. Got yeah. some money. All right. Well, and I believe it's Matthew that actually flat out says he is a wealthy man. Yeah. There you right? go. <laughs> right. Uh, and so he he does this, and, and so many times I've read that, it really hasn't clicked what he did. Now, just as an aside, I was reading in one of the commentaries I was doing. I can't remember which one it was. Mm -hmm. Um, but they were talking about how that act of burial of Jesus' body mm -hmm. was hugely important to prove that he did in fact die. And so getting that moment in time and knowing where his body was mm -hmm. was part of the proof of, you know, yeah. if, if you're looking at it apologetically, yes, in fact, he did die. It was verified. Yes. You know. Yeah. Um, and don't, don't miss this. The, between the two stories, you've got a lady who is, and we understand as we look into it, is preparing Jesus' body for exactly. burial. Yeah. This man is... Is doing much the same. Fulfilling the act yeah. of burial, right. you know. So, right. yeah, there's some... And in a hasty way, too, because, I mean, they were trying to get Jesus' body taken care of and off the cross before... Um, I believe Passover. Yes, before Passover. Again, yeah. So it was the day of preparation, and they needed to get things moving quickly. Yeah. Um, so you you get this this idea. That it's it's very hastily done, but they do. <laughs> That's yeah. why the women went back to finish the job. Yeah. Afterwards, yeah. They didn't get it all the way done. Um, but so he does does this, and, and and if you don't pay attention, you kind of miss it. But it talks about he took a risk and asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. A risk, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and when you when you search and, and I talked about last week how, you know, when you're reading the Gospels, make sure you take the time to read all four, because mm -hmm. they all give you just a little bit of a different glimpse, a 360 view, as you if you will, of like a situation a, of or the scenario, situation, yeah. right? And so we get from that that the first thing is he's he's part of the Sanhedrin, mm. so. That Sanhedrin was the same group that tried Jesus. Yeah. Right? And so 
his reputation was on the line. Yeah, how's that work out, right? Yeah. The same, one of the yeah. guys who sits on the council yeah. who has just arrested and tried and killed Jesus, and one of those guys now is out yeah, burying him. And yeah, I mean, Yeesh. as far as the Sanhedrin was concerned, I think they would have just let Jesus rot on the cross. Like, I, there was that much hatred. There you know? was that much hatred. They would have done and that. And for him to out himself as a follower of Christ yeah. in that way was hugely, you know, we don't, we don't hear anything else about him, but I can't help but think there wasn't, there weren't some repercussions. There that. were, there were some stern conversations I'm going sure. on I'm in that sure. council. Well, him and, you know, he, Nicodemus, Nicodemus the we same see way. him kind of go off the heels of, of Joseph and I think maybe that kind of emboldened him to mm. say, I'm going to jump Yeah, because here. you remember in, in John 3, I think, is where we get most of Nicodemus yeah. in his story, is it says he comes under the cover of yeah. night, kind of in secret. Yeah. Yeah. And by the end of the Gospel of Mark and the end of Jesus' life, yeah, Nicodemus has kind of said, ah, you know, yeah. I'm not going to be undercover anymore. Yeah. I'm, coming, I'm coming public with yeah. my faith, yeah. And actually helps Joseph prepare to, to Jesus' body. To prepare and yeah. to bury Jesus' body, yeah. yeah. So, so Joseph... A, he was wealthy. Yeah. B, he was he was a well respected man. He had a high position. High position in the Jewish society. Yeah. yeah, he was high in leadership, and he risks that in coming forth and 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 burying Jesus. Yeah, you know, and how many times? And this is something you know that that I've had to to question in my own life is how many times have I been willing to risk my reputation or you know sometimes I, I've you know I've heard people of you know risking their jobs mm. when someone asks them about their faith you know and they're not allowed to talk about their faith right or are we willing to risk yeah. everything yeah for sure to it, follow I think it's Christ. just such an important word to really focus in on and it, it, again it's choice yeah and I think sometimes we feel like following Jesus is just automatic like we're just going to wake up every day and it's just like yeah. it, it clicked you know like it doesn't yeah. It doesn't work that following way. Following Jesus Every isn't the aspect of following Jesus is a, a direct choice yes. that we make. Yeah. Um, and to not choose is to choose not to. Yeah. I, I, heard it, I heard this the other day, and it kind of has a bit of a connection to what we're talking about. Uh, and the line was something of the nature of you, you can't say Lord and no at the same mm, time. That's good. Because by choosing one, you're automatically scratching the other one off the list. So if you're... If you're saying no to Jesus in something, you're not seeing him as Lord of your life, controller, master, yeah. commander of your life. But if you are calling him Lord and you are acting as if he is Lord in your life, you're saying no to everything else. Yeah. And so, yeah, a choice, a choice for one thing is always a choice against something else. Yeah. Um, and it is. Every single day, every single thing that we do to follow Christ involves a choice, a willing, voluntary yeah. choice to do something in following Christ that automatically excludes other things. Right. And what we can't forget in the entire story is really the biggest character star of the show is Jesus himself. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jesus, and I, I, I love this every time I come across it, and it may not say it in the book of Mark, but it does say it in the Gospels. Jesus says, um, it, like, uh, nobody's making me do this. Yeah. Nobody's taking my life right. from me. I am He's giving willing, it willingly giving. Yeah. and voluntarily. I am making yeah. that choice. Yeah. Uh, and you, you said it you know, when you were preaching on Sunday, and we talked about it a little bit after the fact, is Jesus gave everything. Yeah. yeah. Gave it all. I he mean, knew he, what he was risking. Did. He <laughs> knew exactly what yeah. he was risking, and he went all the way in the, to the end to do it. Yeah. Gave up everything for us. And so why in the world would we think... That there's anything less than that asked of us. Yeah, um, we just, you know, it. We have and to make not some, in a sense of duty, but in a sense of devotion, devotion and worship and thankfulness. Yeah, that, and that's what comes out yeah. in, in these stories of the, the the woman who anoints Jesus and and yeah. Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea. There is a devotion there, a, a compulsion, if you will, a yeah. conviction to um, to love the man. Yeah. who had loved them so well and had given everything for them. Yeah. Um, I think, it, like I said, it just all revolves around this concept and this idea of a choice. And we have the same thing in our lives. Yeah. We have yeah. 
uh, moments where we need to make a choice and choices and like let's just be honest about it like there are a lot of incredibly difficult decisions mm. that we have to make in life uh, and they're not easy yeah and don't let anybody tell you that they're easy decisions in following christ uh, but they're necessary decisions yeah, yeah. Um, and again we're i there's no there's no like middle of the road on this there's yeah. you're either gonna make a decision for christ or make a decision yeah. against yeah christ. and that's that's part of what we, we talked about sunday is you know, we don't like committing to one or the other. Yeah, we don't like you know, hard we, lines. We, we don't like hard lines. We like, well, you know, I can fudge this a little I'm bit. I'm kind of saved, right? Yeah. Uh, the line that always gets me of, well, they're a good person. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't think the Bible really calls any of us good. <laughs> no. no. No, it has a <laughs> very know? different story. It does. Uh, yeah. On that. Yeah, it but, does. And you know, so, yeah, so a choice. For Jesus, and even if you think like, well, I'm not choosing against Jesus, well, by not choosing for, and right. what he's asking you're you to automatically do, you're choosing automatically choosing against, against yeah. and to do the opposite. Yeah. And so, like I said, yeah, it's so incredibly important. And again, that we do that, like you said, and it's a great observation. We don't do that out of duty, like, oh, that's what I have to do. No, yeah. this is what I, this is what I get to do. This yeah. is a joy uh, to do this. Um, and that's... That's really tough to get to that point. It is, it is. insanely tough because, to get to that point. Again, we go back to the point of it costs us dearly in most case, well, in every case, right? Yeah. Um, although I was, someone reminded me afterwards, they came up afterwards, and they're like, you know, um, it may have been Luke. He's like, you know, to not choose to follow after Jesus, while it, it may not be a costly decision Why, right now. Why, it seems easy. It, it's, it's eventually going to cost you cost more. You, yeah. Eternally, yeah, and immensely, yeah. absolutely. Which I thought was a really good. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so we can that. make a choice not to do the things of Jesus and the things of God, and not to follow after Jesus and make those choices. And and I mean, let's frank, let me frankly honest. Our life would be much easier. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now. Now. <laughs> temporarily, <laughs> right. on Earth. Right. But eternally, we would be we'd in be a wreck. Yeah. We would be a mess. Um, yeah. Any any other parting thoughts? Before we kind of I, just just the you know to make sure that we're making that choice daily, you know, I feel like tonight's there today's episode has been kind of heavy, right? Yeah. But but it is it's a heavy choice. Like it's uh, it's it's one that that we make daily, and um, you know I'm reminded too of of when Jesus talked about the cost of discipleship and and what it costs. Yeah, he talks about him. that a lot, doesn't he? He does. He does. And you know I love the the statement he makes of. Anyone who puts their hand to the plow and looks back yeah. is not fit for the kingdom of God. And I think it's I think it's the gospel of Luke that he talks about that counting the yeah. cost. He goes, What person goes yeah. to war and doesn't count the number of troops he has and doesn't look at the troops right. that are opposing him? What person goes to build a house and doesn't find and doesn't uh, doesn't count up the funds that they have to build at and then gets about halfway through the job and realizes, like, I can't finish this thing because yeah. I don't have... You're, it would be yeah. foolish. The same thing applies to our Christian walk and what we're trying to say is yeah. if we don't count the cost and we don't understand what it truly means to make those choices yeah. uh, and then we say, I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. It makes us look really foolish and it makes the faith look really mm -hmm. foolish because like... Yeah, they weren't willing to go to the end on that, you know. So yeah, yeah you would just yeah. really have to be super critical <laughs> about the decisions that we're making. And again, are we making those out of just duty, or are we doing it out of devotion? Yeah. Um, so yeah, just really some well, great. Well, part I, I do believe that part of, part of counting that cost is looking at what has been given. Oh, exactly. Right? Like if you if you you know if you look at a balance sheet, right? Christ has given way more than we could ever, we could hope ever possibly to give. give. Yeah, yeah. And so, that's that's where we get that gratitude of. Yep. Wow. It doesn't matter what I the throw at this. The balance sheet will never balance. It out. will never balance. We'll out. Never balance out. Yeah. Before what we've given, and so I think this is a great, great thing to end on with this disciple series. And we've said yeah. we said from the very beginning um, is that we were hoping that those who kind of engaged from week one all the way through week seven, they got to the end of it and they understood, A, what it meant to be a disciple in a, in a better way. They understood that in a better yeah. way um, and that they took that with some seriousness uh, and started to enact some of those things in yeah. their life. Yeah. And so we, we, would, we would hope for you as well that are watching um, 
that you would do what we kind of talk about today, that we, you would understand the choices that you are making and are those choices for or against Christ? Um, and are you doing that because you feel like you have to or because you are wanting, wanting to yeah. worship the, per, the, the one, the person who has given it all uh, for, for all of us? Yeah. Um, and so I think when we frame it that way and put it in our minds that way, it makes it like make sense a little better. It's like, oh, yeah. duh. Yeah, like he has given yeah. everything. Why wouldn't it's, I want to It's not like give? we're trying to give to this, you know, God that is so aloof that has, he's never no. been to earth and, and, and been one of us and, and has experienced what we've experienced. Like, no. we're, we're doing he, this he was for here. a God that gave his all That was right us. here in the middle of all of it. Yeah. Yeah. And we're, we're trying. I say this way because I, I, I really don't know if we could ever get to the point where we feel like we've given everything I don't know. I, at least I guess I'm saying that for myself. Like, I always feel like there's something that I'm just kind of holding back. Like, but we, we try to give something for the, for the one who gave everything, yeah. you know? Yeah, we, we strive to give everything is what we yeah. do. Um, but uh, just some great stuff to think about. Yeah. Like I said, great, yeah, great sure. end to the Disciple Series. I really enjoyed this series. Hope you enjoyed it. We hope you continue to enjoy uh, what we try to do here on The Wrap, which is, like I said, just kind of try to... Uh, put a bow on uh, yeah. on the sermon for the Sunday and, and just give you a, a little bite-sized kind of chunks of things to think about uh, to help you continue to grow in your walk with Christ. And so we thank you again for joining us for another episode, and we will see you next time. See you guys.